Thank <laughs> you. 
Deva Ki Jai Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Srila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Manjari has come younger Manjari Jai Jai Deva Hare Is he has come? Yes She should come after this year Oh God. God. Oh. Creatures, all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis and guests are guests who come tonight. I want to make an announcement about our festival. Uh, there are programs outside. You may have picked one. Sri Gurave Nama Bancha Kalpataru Vyasha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patitanam Pavanebhu Vaishnavebhu Namo Nama Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratvise Nama Gurave Gaurachandraya Radhika Yaita Dalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tada Bhaktaya Namo Nama Yang Prabhrajanta Manupetama Peta Kutsyam Dvai Pāyano Viraha Kātarya Juhāva Putre Titan Mayataya Tarvo Bhinedu Tang Sarva Bhūtari Dayam Munimāna Toshmi Tavai Vāsmi Tavai Vāsmi Najvāmi Tvaya Bhina Iti Vigyai Rādhe Tang Naimāma Saranantike First of all, my millions of dandat pranam in the lotus of feet of my spiritual master, Paramaradhatam Nikta Leela Pravishtong Vishnupad Sishmad Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj. And same in the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru, Nikta Leela Pravishtong Vishnupad Sishmad Bhakti Vedant Swami Maharaj. My dandat pranam to all sannyasi brind and other sajjan sudhi brinda. I am very indebted to my Shiksha Guru, Sri Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. 
I have served him so much from 1946. I sent him all the paraphernalia he wanted in Western countries like deities, coal, mridanga, kartal, and so many, even mathura, peda. I sent him. And he was my shiksha guru. But yet he was junior in sannyas. He was, he was, he treated me like a bosom friend. He used to be anywhere. He used to roll the chapati and I used to cook. And thus, after offering to Krishna, we used to take in Vrindavan, here and there. <coughs> and by His mercy, I am coming here. Hmm? All are hearing Me. You are all coming due to Him. Hmm? And I have heard from Him, I I served him, so you are hearing me. And so many devotees, here about four or five hundred devotees. Other places, one thousand even, they come to hear me. This is his glorification. I first came to see his glory in Western countries, I went to New York, Washington, L.A., oh, so many places, and I saw His glory. Everywhere in mountains, in the midst of ocean, in the top of hills, everywhere I saw. I think that where He has gone, it is a holy place for all. So. He was very wonderful preacher. By the mercy of his transcendental guru and taking sannyas from our guru, Śrīla Bhakti Prajñāyam Kesava Goswāmī Maharaj, he came to Western countries. And in couple of years he preached everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world. He Translate and authority books of Sanskrit language of our Guru Paramparas. So many. Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamritam, oh so many. And he established preaching center all over the world, everywhere. So, <coughs> I'm giving by heartly what? Pushpanjali uh, in his lotus feet. I want to say you that we have come to preach bhakti. Also perhaps you know that when Brahma came from the lotus abode, from the Padmanav, Navi, ski Navi. Navel. 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 And he came on the surface what water, only water and water. He was thinking, why you have come here? Who created? He began to search, search him, went down and up so many times, but he could not. Oh, could not find him. Then, tap, tap, taps, there was sound, and by this, oh, I should tap, Austerity. what? Tap means sir? Austerities. Austerities. Then, thousand of years he was in stories. And then, Narayan came in his meditation. meditation and told him that now I am giving you the power of 
creation. Creation. But Brahma told Prabhu, I want that you should be merciful to me, that I should not think me myself that I am creator of the world. Please. And then he told Chatushloki Bhagavat in four slopes. This is called Chatushloki Bhav. Brahma, hmm? he, thought, he saw three times in all Vedas, hmm? Riksham, Jadu, Atharma, Ved, Upanishad and all others, looked very carefully hmm? and he saw that all the <coughs> souls who have come to this world and they are in endless pain of endless birth and day and very suffering. How they can be liberated? How they can come in the service of Supreme Lord Krishna? So he <coughs> three times meditated and he come to solution that only by bhakti it can come. So the Four sloks of Bhagavad Jate, that is Chatushloki Bhagavad, is the essence of all whole literature, Vedic literature. And he told to Narad, and Narad told to Vyasdev, and he told that you should elaborate them. He told that how can I? that in bhakti yog samadhi, in the trance of bhakti, bhakti yog, and that, thus you can see all the sweet pastimes of Krishna, and then you should write it for all Living conditioned life. souls. And then he came and he, in trance of bhakti yog, he saw pursat apasat pursam puruna. He saw puruna purus. He saw Nanda Baba, Jasoda, all Brajbasi, all gopis, all cows, everything and all the sweet pastimes of Krishna. Everything he said. He saw the Rash dance, Brahmar Geet, Venu Geet, Gopi Geet and others. And then he wrote it. That is Srimad Bhagavatam, now a stage in twelve cantos. cantos. And so many sloks, numbers are sloks. Atharahajja. Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. So this Bhagavatam is ex. Certainly the essence of a whole the Indian Vedic literature. If anyone will follow this Bhagavatam here with Shraddha, with honor, then Krishna will come in your heart. So when Kalju came, after Krishna departure, after 250 years about. Then all the Rishis Maharshis like Sauna, about 88,000 Rishis and Maharshi, all they came, in, came to Namisharana. And the son of Lomharshan Sutta, Ugrasava Sutta was there. And they asked him, Oh, this very dangerous, fearful Kaljug is coming. All will give up their religions. Ladies, male, even sannyasis, brahmacharis will give up their religions. So, please tell us, you know, you have heard from your Gurudev, Sukhadev Goswami, everything, Srimad Bhagavatam. And from your 
mind. Hmm? You should decide what is the good for Atma. Hmm? Not for body, he asked. <coughs> Prayena alpa. Ayusa. 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 Rain Alpa Ayusa, Shabya Kalavishman Juge Jana, Manda Sumanda Matayo, Manda Bhagya, Hi Upadita, Patasadho, Atra Jatsaram, Samudhita Manisha, Bruhina Sadhadanu Jinat. If you are qualified to hear, please tell that how our soul will be happy. He did not ask for how body will be happy. Because we are not body. This body is a bag of urine, latrine, blood and so many things. From all the part of these doors, nine doors, bad things coming. Stool, latrine, so many things coming everywhere. <laughs> so we should not be attached by this, if you are entangled to enjoy by body, oh, you are then deceived. Hmm? So, they are telling, if we are qualified to hear, please tell us. Then he became very happy. And then he began to speak. Hmm? He told, Savai Kunsang, Paro Dharmo, Jato Bhakti Radhokkaje, Hmm? Certainly, it is highest top of Paramadharma for whole universe, for whole uh, jivas, living, living entities. Certainly. Tom, to, by serving a Supreme Lord Krishna, there should be no gap in what? Interval. Uh, in, and it should be in the guidance of Guru Vaishnava. And continuous, like endless Madhudhara. Stream of honey. Stream of honey. No break at all. Always day, night, whole life. But must be in the guidance of Guru. Then, and only to please Krishna, nothing else. So this bhakti, service of Supreme Lord, is Param Dharma of all. So Larupa Goswami has also told about this. And what is that? Anna Abhilasita. You should translate. Om Jnana Tivirandasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave First of all, before I speak by the order of our Srila Gurudev, I'm first of all offering my pranams, my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of my uh, Diksha Guru, my initiating spiritual master, Nitalila Prabhishta Om Vishnupad, His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And secondly, <coughs> I'm offering my equal Dandavat pronounced to the lotus feet of my Siksha Gurus, Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnupad, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, and to our Gurudev, Om Vishnupad, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I'm praying at their lotus feet 
that I can speak some words to illuminate what our Gurudev has already told. And I'm also offering my respects to our audience here tonight of wonderful devotees, friends and guests. Hare Krishna. So Srila Gurudev has introduced the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam. He has explained to us that this literature, composed of 18,000 verses in Sanskrit language, written over 5,000 years ago, and uh, passed down through a chain of spiritual masters and disciples for the past 5,000 years, in an unbroken chain, that this knowledge is the very essence of all spiritual literatures which are coming from India, all philosophical knowledge. So the beginning of that great literature is the subject that Srila Gurudev has selected to speak to us this evening about. And in the beginning of that literature, as he explained, there was an assembly of many thousands of very learned, very exalted, spiritually realized personalities, rishis, saints, sages, who had studied spiritual knowledge for centuries. And these personalities assembled together to hear this conclusive knowledge of the Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by the very great sage Sutta Goswami. So in the very beginning of that literature, the question was being asked to Sutta Goswami by another great sage who was the spokesman of the assembly. His name was Shonaka, Shonaka Rishi. So he requ requested from him that what is the highest, uh, the highest activity that any living being can perform by which they will be able to fully realize their eternal spiritual identity. So, in this verse that Srila Gurudev has cited and has requested me to explain, it is explaining the process of Bhakti Yoga. I am mentioning this verse. Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhakti Radhokshaje Ahai Tuki Ap Pratihata Ye Atma Sam Prasidati. Here it is saying, Savai Pumsam Paro Dharma. Many of us are familiar with the word Dharma, even it is in the English dictionary nowadays. This word Dharma is referring to activities or duties of the human being. Or even more specifically, it is referring to the constitutional nature of our very own being. But as Srila Gurudev explained to us, what is our real nature? Is our nature just this physical body? Is our nature just this mental body that we have, this uh, capacity to think, feel, and will, etc.? Is that our real identity, our real nature? Or is it something more than that? Actually, Srila Gurudev has told us the essence of what is self-realization. And that is to understand that first and foremost, this physical body is not our real self. It is a temporary garment that we are wearing over our eternal soul. So the whole subject matter of the Vedas is to bring us to a higher understanding of our eternal nature, of our soul. And what, by which process, by following which process, our soul can be completely liberated, freed from all suffering, and attain its eternal happy nature, spiritual nature. So in this first verse, which is being cited here, it is immediately going straight to the point. And it is explaining there that Savai Pungsam Parodharma, the Paradharma or the very highest Dharma duty of the living entity, the human being, is to perform Bhaktir Adhokshaja. 
Yato Bhaktir Adhokshaja. Here's the word Bhakti. Our festival, uh, this three days, is called Bhakti Yoga Festival. And this process of Bhakti, this is the highest process which is given in the Vedas to realize our eternal nature and to realize the nature of the Supreme Lord. So, here it is telling that the very highest duty of every living being is to render pure loving devotion, which is called bhakti, pure devotion to the Supreme Being, who is the source of this entire creation. That Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is also known as Adhokshaja. Adhokshaja means that being who is beyond the range of our senses, beyond the range of our mind even, our thinking capacity. He is existing in a transcendental realm, far beyond this material world. But yet, there is a process through which our soul can connect with Him, and that is called bhakti. But what is the definition of bhakti? How can we understand that we are on the pathway of bhakti, that we are truly performing bhakti? So in this verse it is telling, Ahaituki apratihata ye atma samprasidati. That that bhakti or that pure devotion, it has to be devoid of any other motivations. That means trying to get some material gain, some material benefit, physical benefit, etc., within this world, wealth uh, and material happiness and such. Not that one is performing bhakti so that one can get these things. No. It has to be ahaituki, without any other motivation. And apratihata means that it also, it must be constantly performed without any uh, uh, breakage. Just like the stream of honey, when you pour honey, it comes out in a flowing stream without being broken at all. In the same way, when the soul, when we learn how to perform bhakti yoga, which is going on 24 hours daily, and this is fully uh, performed by our body, our mind, our senses, our emotions, oh, then ye atma samprasidati then the Supreme Lord becomes fully satisfied by our attempt to approach Him, and He reveals Himself to the senses and mind of the, of the soul. And more specifically, how do we understand this bhakti, that how can it be devoid of any other desires? So there is another verse written by one of our very great spiritual masters in our line, named Srila Rupa Goswami, about 500 years ago, he appeared in this world, and he has written the authentic literatures to explain to all living beings how to do this process of bhakti yoga. There he has described the definition of bhakti in a more specific way even. And there he says, Anyabi lashita shunyam, jnana karmat yanavritam, anapuyena krishnanu shilanam bhaktir uttama. Here he describes the term uttama bhakti. Uttama bhakti means pure bhakti, without any adulteration. Just like water. Water is originally pure. Uh, if you ask for a glass of water, then you are referring to pure water, without anything added or subtracted from it. So, this uttama bhakti, which is the highest, purest form of bhakti, which only alone can satisfy our eternal soul and the supreme soul, here he's giving a definition of it, and he's telling there, Anya Abhilashita Shunya. This bhakti must be completely devoid of all other desires. Abhilas means desires. So there are many types of desires within this world that are not spiritual desires, but they're material desires. And they fall into a few different categories. Jnana, karma, yoga. Jnana means that we want to attain impersonal liberation. We want that our soul uh, attains the freedom from this cycle of birth and death, but it attains a, a situation of merging within the Supreme Absolute and losing its identity. 
this type of knowledge, this type of jnana, impersonal knowledge, it will cover bhakti and it will not allow bhakti to manifest. Similarly, the uh, desire of karma. Karma means sense gratificatory seeking activities within this world. Not only within this world, even within the next life, wanting to attain a, a material happiness even within this universe in a higher planetary system with higher levels of enjoyment. So this is called karma. So the desire of karma also will cover pure bhakti. And yoga. Some persons perform the practices of Ashtanga Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, goes by various names, which is also mentioned in the Vedas, but their aim and objective is not pure bhakti, but rather that they will achieve mystic powers, subtle abilities to control the material world, and in this way have their selfish type of enjoyment. So these types of activities, they are obstructing the flow of pure bhakti, and actually they cover bhakti. So the, the definition given here in the first part of this verse is that one has to be devoid of these other types of desires in order for bhakti to be pure. And then the positive definition is given, anakul yena krishna anushilanam. This means that there is a constant cultivation. Anushilanam means constantly cultivating with one's senses of the body, uh, also the mind, also one's words, and also one's desires, emotions, or moods. So when these are all constantly flowing, as we say, in an unbroken stream like a flow of honey, and anakul yena krishna anushilanam, that it is performed only for the satisfaction and happiness of Krishna or the Supreme Being, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is also known by many other names, when that devotion is performed for His satisfaction and nothing else, then it is called Bhakti Uttama. It is called Uttama Bhakti or Pure Bhakti. So only by this type of Bhakti can our soul become completely satisfied. And the authentic literature of Srimad Bhagavatam has given this type of definition from the very, very beginning to explain that now this great literature of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is going to describe the activities of the Supreme Being, Supreme Personality of Godhead, when He appeared on this earth planet 5,000 years ago, if you want to attain the perfection now you must hear that, and you must do pure bhakti, and then you will attain this ultimate destination of pure divine love, eternal liberation from this path of birth and death, freedom from all fear, all anxiety, all suffering, and attainment of your eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. And this alone can satisfy the heart. So this is the definition of pure bhakti, which Srila Gurudev is explaining to us so mercifully, and now Srila Gurudev will continue with this narration of the Srila Bhagavatam. If anyone, Vāsudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita, Janate Asu Jnanam Vairagyam Jnanam Chajahe Dukha. Oh, what bhakti has been told? If it is done, then very soon, very soon, automatically detaching from world, detachment. detachment of the world, and all kinds of knowledge, Krishna tattva, jiva tattva, maya tattva, ras tattva, radha tattva, shakti tattva, everything, will come automatically. Hmm? But dharma sva nishchitaṁ unsaṁ viśvakṣeṁ katha suja na tottādhyaṁ jadiratiṁ śram evahi kevanam. If anyone chanting, doing archan and other, uh, other activities 
but he has no taste in hari katha hearing then everything is in vain he he will be very weak after some time he will give up his chanting archan and other things so they are really very fortunate those who have interest and trace taste in hari katha hearing also by hearing if detachment from world worldly desire has not coming then what we should think there is certainly any hole in our bhakti hmm? you must know then if any one hearing is hari, hari katha shrinvatan swakatha krishna punna shravana kirtana hridam tasto jhabda prani vidhano suhit satam hmm? if any one with honor hmm? he is hearing hari katha krishna katha this especially bhagavatam especially 10th canto 11 12th canto hmm. then krishna comes in the heart automatically hmm. and what is wrong what are anarts anarts Unwanted, unwanted things like a friend he clears all and sit there nasta prayesu abhadreshu at that time oh if our abhadra unwanted things has gone about something is rest then nitam bhagavat sevaya this bhagavatam sevaya hearing from superiors and after hearing anu suniyat always hearing from gurudev or vaishno superior vaishno if they will also tell to others this shrimad bhagavat katha or one bhagavat is no that is भक्त भागवत अहम वेद मे शोको व्यक्ति व्यासो व्यक्ति न व्यक्ति वक्ता भक्त्या भागवत ग्राह्य न बुद्धि न चटी कया न बाई माइंड नथिंग एनी वन कैन रियलाइज दे मे बी सो लर्नेड पर्सन वनली बाई भक्त्या वी कैन नो why shankar this has told this vyaso vetti na vetti va why he told but because he is a uh, worshipable incarnation of narayan so krishna may not know anyhow gopis knows asat tatva knows it more better so they are like asat tatva so they can understand and then bhidyate hriday granthi all kinds of worldly attachment gone finished and other what bad karmas we have done oh also it goes away ato bai kabayo nityam bhaktim paramaya paramaya muda vasudevi bhagavati kurvant atma prasiddam so all kavi kavi means realized souls like brahma shankar sukadev goswami narad goswami vyas and others always they do bhakti and vasudev bhagavati kurvant atm for happiness of soul here soul means not soul our but soul here super soul krishna if krishna is happy then we, we will be happy if we are thinking that 
why Krishna should? I am myself. It cannot be. Without sun you cannot see anything. Sun also, you also and others. But if sun there is, then by sun we can see everyone, ourselves also. So, Vyas now he is telling, himself telling. Oh, before he has uh, manifested Srimad Bhagavatam, he is thinking, I have divided four Vedas. I have written in very uh, easy language, hmm? Purans all, more easy, Mahabharata. And in that also Gita Upanishad is there. Hmm? So many things I have done. Also I have done, collected, essence of whole Vedic literature that is called Brahma Sutra. But I am not satisfied. How? Why? What is the reason? He hmm? was thinking, and the end time, North came. Oh, Tirtha Maharaj. O Akya Timiram Nesva Janam Janasavakaya Jashurun Militam Jay So, 
all guru bhakti and how is their life how they did bhakti so narad rishi when came to sudesh dev and he spoke so many katha they are explaining all things tatva sadharmam charam bujam hari bhajanna patkato pati tato yadi jatr kava avadra avud amusaki govartha apto bhajatam sadharmat मेरे पास सब फल वाली इन फैमिली लाइफ एंड फैमिली सिचुएशन फैमिली